All right, I'm uh, Mike Maranto reporting for DamoWildcats.com and joined right now by our head women's volleyball coach, Stephanie Albano. And uh, coach, uh, a little bit disappointing weekend for you guys. Uh, a couple of home losses this past weekend to uh, two of the teams that you're, you're battling for conference tournament position with. Uh, a five-set loss to NYIT and a three-set loss to uh, LIU Post. Um, you know, the, the NYIT match, we'll, just, we'll start right there. Um, guys dropped the first two sets came back took it to a fifth set the fifth set was from a spectator standpoint was epic um you know it goes 2018 nyt gets gets the win in that set to get the win in the match you know what was the team's mindset in that game you know falling behind two nothing and then coming back well i think for us we knew that we had to play hard and there's no risk in not doing it anymore um so even that second set we were down by quite a bit and we fought back to then make it go 26-24 and then same thing in the third set we were down and then we fought back um, so it was just a lot of fighting back um, in our case until we got to the fifth set where we played them point for point and we were even up 14-12 to 12 and we just couldn't finish um, which is unfortunate because we gave it like everything that we had and we just weren't able to come out with the, the W. Um, did you feel like that took a lot out of your team? I mean, you guys come into the match Sunday I the the task Sunday was is easier said than done. You know, LA Post is at the top of the conference, um, really playing well. Um, you guys just, out to my eyes, just just look like a tired team, a team that spent a lot of energy trying to get a win on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. And LA is a really good team. And even when I went back and watched the video. We were in it that first set, like point for point, and we didn't take care of some easy balls that if we would have, like. Would that have changed the momentum? It might have. Um, and then even the third set, we were up by a lot and then just bled errors at the end. And they did get a lot of kills, but we also matched them kill-wise. We just made a lot of errors, but that's just who we've been all year. So for us, it's figuring out we only have two matches left. Can we get kills and eliminate some of those unforced errors to put together um, two good matches? Uh I guess one of the positives that you could take out of the weekend is uh, Jen Harris. Uh, you guys have made a, a decision recently to, to move her on the outside um, and uh, pay dividends. You know, she had 17 kills in the match against NYT, uh, nine more, which is a team high against LIU Post. Um, what have you seen from her recently that, that uh, has allowed you to, to make that move, moving her out from the middle to the, to the outside? Um, well, since she was our leading kill scorer, it's her ability to score points. And sometimes if we're not in system enough, we can't feed her the ball in the middle so she can get the ball more on the outside pin, which is why we put her out there. And really kudos to her, especially the NYT match. Like that was a really tough match against a good team. And she's a freshman who's never played outside before, like in high school or anything. And for her to come in and just take care of business, I thought was really awesome to see. Um, so looking at the, the conference tournament picture, again, we've kind of been documenting this for the last uh, couple of weeks, you know, as the conference season has played out, there's, you're in a group of five teams that's competing for four conference tournament spots. Um, if the conference tournament started today, we would be in that fifth spot. We'd be on the outside looking in. Um, so I'm sure you guys will be doing some some scoreboard watching this week. Um, you know, Bridgeport and NYIT both have four league losses. We have five. So um, if either one of those, and, and they have to play each other, um, I should mention that. So one of those two teams will get a fifth loss. Um, I don't know that that necessarily helps us with the way the tiebreaker is going to shake out, but you should know by midweek if your team's going to have a chance uh, with two wins this weekend. Right, and we need Bridgeport to lose both because we'd have the tiebreaker against them. So if they lose both, then it's really in our hands to to finish out the weekend strong against Queens, and then it could come down to Malloy. But we won't know until Wednesday if that'll even be the case. Um, Going into it this weekend, you, you do have you have Queens first on Saturday. Um, you know they're a team that's that's in that pack of teams that I, on the bottom. Um, it's really incredible to see the the disparity between uh, record wise between the the five teams at the top and then the the bottom couple. 
Then you go in, you'll have Malloy on Sunday, who's uh, battling for the, the chance to maybe host the conference tournament. So they have something to play for. I, my question is, how do you get to the Malloy match without overlooking Queens? Well, we can't overlook Queens. I, Queens is a tough place to play. Uh, every year that I've been there, we've struggled. My first year, they beat us in three. Last year, we went to five with them. And so for us, it's definitely not an overlook because we got to take care of it at Queens. And I think we just need to control the ball on our side, find ways to score fast, and keep them out of system, and we should be okay. So if you get the help you need, you know, Bridgeport uh, loses twice, that would mean they – Bridgeport plays L LIU Post, who, again, is one of the top teams in the league, and NYT. So it, it is conceivable that Bridgeport could lose twice this week. You get the win at Queens. You go into that match against Malloy, who's 12-1 and one at home. You know, what is, what's your message to the team going to be that day? I mean, I think for our team, it's, it's not so much worrying about the win or the loss. It's how are we going to get there and what are we doing to make the play better? And if we can do that um, and we can scrap, um, we should be in good shape. But again, like Malloy came here and we, we handled them pretty easily. So I know like that's going to be in the back of the mind. In the back of their mind is if they win that match against us, they get to host. Um, so there's a lot up for stake and I guess it's seeing which team wants to come out that day and see if we can get it done and play hard. Uh, going into the weekend, you're, Damon and Bridgeport are the only two teams uh, to have wins over Malloy this season. Um, so you, you got that confidence booster in, in your back pocket as well so um it'll be an interesting week um we will have you covered uh with all the information you need at damonwildcats.com the 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 matches that, that we need help in happen early in the week tuesday and wednesday um so for anybody that's interested in, in tuning in th those matches will be on the ecc network and uh we will uh i'm sure have some social media postings going out with uh, the results of those matches to keep everybody updated on where we stand and it's our hope you know we we get the help we need and we pick up two wins this weekend hopefully coach and i'll be back here at this time next week and talking about uh, your second straight conference tournament berth awesome good luck thank you